So we've talked about finite sets, and we've talked about the natural numbers, which are infinite sets. So we might want to answer this question of, can we think of any number, any sets that are going to be bigger than the set of natural numbers? Now, intuitively, it might seem like this is unlikely to be true, because when you have an infinite set and you add something else to it, then that isn't going to increase the size of the set because it was already infinite. But we're going to see that this intuition sort of breaks down when you're no longer adding elements to your set one at a time. So recall from last week, we talked about power sets. So the power set of a set S is going to be the set of all subsets of that set. And what we're going to show as our first theorem today is we're going to show that the size of the power set of S is going to be greater than the size of S. Now, here's one way that we could potentially go about proving that. So we certainly know that the empty set is going to be a subset of S. So therefore, the ent empty set is an element of the power set of S, but it's not going to be an element of S itself. Well, we can also say that 2 to the power S is going to contain every single singleton set of S. That is, if we look at any of the elements from the set S itself, and we say the set containing just that one element, well, that's going to be a subset of S, so therefore it's an element of the set 2 to the S. So for every individual element of S, we can map that to one element of 2 to the s, and then the empty set is going to be at least one more. So therefore, we can conclude that there's at least one more thing in the power set of s than there was in the set s to begin with. So that was one way that we could prove this, but maybe we want more practice with induction, or maybe we wanted to be a, a little bit more formal with it. So, so here's an alternative way that we could try to prove this claim, that for any finite set s, uh, the power set of S is going to be greater than, or is going to be larger than, the set S itself. So what we're doing here is we're actually going to do this by induction over the sizes of the sets. So that is, we're going to say if it's true for every set of size 0, then we're going to demonstrate that it's true for every set of size 1, and if it's true for every set of size 1, then maybe it's true for every set of size 2, and so forth. So we're going to use induction to show that every finite set has this property, that the power set of S is going to be greater, is going to be larger than the set S itself. So for our base case, we're going to start with a set of, a set of size 0. There's only one set of size 0, that is the empty set. So what we're going to do is, if we look at what is the power set of the empty set, well, the empty set only has one subset, and that's itself. So therefore, the power set of the empty set is going to be equal to the set containing the empty set. So the size of the power set of the empty set is going to be just 1, and the size of the empty set itself is 0. So the power set of the empty set is indeed larger than the cardinality of the empty set. So our base case holds. And then the next thing we're going to look at is our inductive step. So for our inductive step, since we're doing induction over the sizes of sets, what we're going to do is we're going to show that if every set of size m is smaller uh, than its own power set, then so are all of the sets of size m plus 1. So we're doing induction over the size of the set. So we're going to say if this statement is true for all sets of size m, we're going to show that it's true for all sets of size m plus 1. So to do this, let's consider that we have some set t. And this set t is of size m plus 1. If set t is of size m plus 1, then we're going to be able to find some set s uh, such that S is a subset of T, uh, where S is of size M, so S is going to be a subset of T that's one smaller than M was, meaning that there's going to be some element from T that is not an element from S. So S is going to be a set of size M that is basically T, but with one thing missing. We knew that since S was going to be a subset of T, then the power set of S was going to be a subset of the power set of T. But we also know that since x was not an element of s, the set containing x was going to be an element of the power set of t, but not of the power set of s. So this is an element that belongs to the power set of t that does not belong to the power set of s. So what that means is that the power set of t, the size of that is going to be at least one more than the size of the power set of s, because Everything that the power set of S had belonged to the power set of T as well, but then the power set of T also had this one more thing, which was uh, the set containing just X. We also know by our inductive step, our assumption in our inductive step, 
the power set of S was going to be larger than the set S itself, so therefore the power set of S plus 1 is greater, the cardinality of the power set of S plus 1 is greater than the cardinality of S plus 1. And we defined S to be T, but with one thing missing, so that means that the cardinality of S plus 1 is exactly equal to the cardinality of T. So here we have the power set of, uh, the, the cardinality of the power set of T is greater than uh, this value here, which is greater than uh, this value, the cardinality of S plus 1, which matches T. So it must have been that the power set of T, the cardinality of the power set of T was greater than the cardinality of T itself. So now this proof works for any finite set, but can we say that this claim holds not just for any finite set, but any set overall? So if we wanted to show that for any set, including the infinite ones, the power set of S was going to be greater, the cardinality of the power set of S was going to be greater than the cardinality of S, does this proof work? So pause the video here, look through this proof, and see what breaks when we remove the finite piece of this. So what breaks when we try to claim that this proof by induction will hold for any set, not just any finite set? So the piece that's going to break here is going to occur in the inductive step. So the challenge that we have is that we can't build a finite, an infinite set by adding one more element to a finite set. So in our inductive step, what we did is we started with this set of size m, and we said that when this property holds for a set of size m, we can conclude that it's also going to hold for a set of size m plus 1. So the inductive step gives us a way to step from a set of size m to a set of size m plus 1. But we're only ever one more than the set size that we had before. And we can't, just by adding 1, get to an infinite number. So this is not going to work for any for infinite sets, because this is, well, this proves an infinite number of things. So this proves that this property holds for an infinite number of sets. Each one of those sets that this proof works for is itself finite.